describe magnetism. So we're looking at the principles of DC machines, and this is our objectives in this little video presentation. We're going to explain the principle of operation of a DC motor, explain the development of torque, and how that occurs in a DC motor, and explain how you go about reversing DC motors. But before we do that, a uh, little risk assessment. I've been thinking about electric shock. Um, direct, we're only going to use ELV. That's voltages well under 24 volts. Um, we could get some burns because the field on my little demo model does get quite warm, so we've got to be careful of that. So we're only going to operate it for short periods. And of course, falls and trips is always keeping our leads and things well up off the floors, etc. So we don't trip over things. So here's our basic machine. And you'll see this looks very, very similar to the machine that I have, the little training aid. We have a basic frame that uh, sits around the outside of the machine, which holds it uh, basically all in place. We have uh, some bearings at either end, well my bearings are actually bushes, little brass bushes holding the shaft in place. Sitting around the outside of that I have my field. My field is only made up of uh, a single field winding with a north and a south which you'll see in the pictures very shortly. So I have a pole on either side, so I have a, a north on one side and on the opposite side, which you can't see here, um, I have a south. Rotating around the inside of the machine, of course, sitting on the shaft, there is the armature. And you can see that here there's my armature and my shaft connecting through my, sitting inside my bearings. And then on the end of my armature, of course, is my commutator with bushes to take electrical power to my motor. Looking on end section, there are field windings. Um, as I mentioned on mine, I only really have a field winding on either side, I just have a north and a south on either side, not quite as complex as this drawing. So, again, my shaft in the middle, my commutator segments you can see here, the armature itself around the outside. And of course, wound into the armature are my armature windings. And again, as I mentioned, I only really have a north pole and a south pole on my particular training aid. So basic operation of my machine is because I have a north pole and I have a south pole and I have windings going through here. We end up with this push-pull effect. Of course, I've got a magnetic field across my motor created by the field windings and as current passes through these they're pulled in here and then as they pass out the other side of course they get expelled they get pushed and as it gets out here it gets pushed and as it gets pushed, rotational energy is produced, and I end up with this 
push pull arrangement and of course I get rotational energy as my armature spins around in the bearings. So here's the basics of my little training aid motor. Um, I have a base for my frame. I have a very simple armature that's only got two windings on it, so you know I end up with a very simple north-south arrangement. I've got a shaft that runs through it, and of course I've got a two-segment commutator to go on it. To connect that commutator to the outside world, I've got a couple of bushes, brushes I should say. In my particular case they're just uh, steel plated, nickel plated steel bushes. Then to hold my uh, commutator at either end, I've just got end frames with bearings. Actually the motor frame is uh, here. And this is the outside of my motor and it's coloured north and south, blue for south, red for north. So I'm going to end up with my magnetic field going across the centre here, produced by this thing here, which is my field winding. It's about a six volt field winding. So I can put about six volts, uh, three amps through this, but only for very short periods of time because it does get quite warm as I mentioned before. So let's look at how this is constructed and uh, together. So I'm starting by putting my little L bracket which just holds one end together or holds one end of the bearing. Next I've got in my uh, main frame and that it also holds the field winding. So this is the main frame, this blue side being the, uh, the south. And this part, this gap that you can see up in here, this is where my field winding is going to go. Next step is to put the armature in. Um, a bit hard to see the armature, but you can see the shaft running through here, you can see the commutator and then the armature continuing in here, sorry the shaft continuing out there but of course the armature is hidden inside the uh, frame in here. Then of course we add the, uh, the brushes to the system so we've now got a way of getting our electrical contact via rotating mechanical system of commutator and brushes so I can now get a uh, supply voltage applied to my motor and then finally we add the actual field winding itself and you can just see the leads coming out here for the field winding. And uh, I'm going to put a field voltage on that. And that's going to create an electromagnet. And that magnet will create a flux across, giving me a north and a south pole across the frame of my motor. So here you can see it a little bit more clearly. You can see my armature in here. And my field winding here is going to produce lines of flux across my frame, north to south, and uh, my rotor will spin within 
it failed. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some monitoring around our circuit. Here's our basic circuit. Um, we're going to have my field in this particular case connected in series with my armature and I'm going to put a load on that I can put on and off. You'll see it's a couple Lego blocks on a friction drive. I'm just going to use the on off switch on the power supply to give me voltage to turn it on and off and of course on my power supply I have a built-in ammeter and I have a built-in voltmeter so I don't have to have separate ones of those and I simply have a variable DC supply that I can vary anywhere between 0 volts and 30 volts DC so that's my basic setup and this is what it looks like in reality so here's my fixed motor supply so this is simply a DC supply I can monitor the amps I can monitor the voltage I can control the current here and I can control the voltage here so you can see in this particular case if you were to chase the yellow wire in goes through the armature comes out the other side of the armature here goes through my field coil out of my field coil and back to the power supply so as my circuit diagram showed I do have the field and the armature in series with each other you can see here a small wheel a rubber wheel and I've got some Lego blocks with a little bit of uh, weight so there's several Lego blocks offering a little bit of force down onto the wheel creating some friction onto my output shaft so I can change the load quite easily so what we're going to do is we're going to run the motor at no load which is what we're doing at the moment and you can see that um, We've got about uh, 14 volts running on the supply and we're pulling just under an amp, so 900 milliamps. And the motor is spinning, there's no load. My Lego blocks aren't sitting down on the wheel yet. And so I've got a 900 milliamps and I've got 14.5 volts at this point in time. So no load, it's drawing that kind of current. So what happens next? So you can see now I've dropped the Lego blocks down onto the friction wheel. So they're now providing some friction and you'll notice straight away my load has gone up considerably. Now I'm at 1.2 or 1200 milliamps but my voltage is still stable, 14.5. So the current to my motor has increased and the speed has got slower. My motor has slowed down a little bit to cope with this extra load that's created by the friction of my Lego blocks. So full load, gone a little slower. Current has gone up, but voltage has remained stable, no change. So we're going to do it all over again, but this time we're going to put the field in series. We're going to put it in shunt. So again, power supply hasn't changed. We're going to use the ammeter and the voltmeter on the power supply to operate the machine. 
but this time my field instead of being in series is now in parallel or what's called shunt armature no change and I've got a shaft out of here and it's connected to my Lego load so I've got my Lego load connected out here So, we had to introduce an extra instrument in here because I now want to measure the field current. So, my power supply is going to give me the current to the total machine and the voltage to the total machine. But I want to know what the current is in the field. So, I've set this ammeter up here and it's going to tell us the current just for the field. So you'll see the field is connected separately. So if you follow the field wiring, it goes straight to the power supply. And again, it just goes up via the meter, through the meter, and back to the power supply. So my field connection is in parallel and my armature connection is in parallel. I still have my output shaft, I still have my friction wheel as you can see here, and at the moment my Lego friction brake is ready to come on as required. So that's the basic setup. And here we go. So we're running at uh, no load, our motor current is at 100, sorry, 1,860 milliamps, and our field current is at uh, 1922, so that gives us about 100 milliamps in the armature. So our armature is only about 100, sorry, only about 100 milliamps. And you can see our armature current here very clearly, and you can see our current to the whole supply and we're running at about 5.7 volts. We have to run at a lower voltage because we've got everything in parallel now. So next step is let's jump up the load, let's put the load up and you'll notice the current climbs substantially so we increase the load so load goes up current goes up, our field current is unchanged, and you'll notice also our voltage is also pretty well unchanged. So our motor current goes up, which means our armature current must have increased to cope with the extra load. So our armature current in this particular case has gone up nearly 200 milliamps. So to cope with our Lego block load here, our armature current has gone up by about 200 milliamps to cope with this extra bit of load that we're applied through our friction wheel. So as you can see, it's the armature current that's got to increase, not the field current. And you'll also note that we've gone slightly slower. This it did go slower, but nowhere near as slow as the series one. So by putting our field in shunt, we're getting a better speed response. So let's compare the two. So here's our series motor to the left and the shunt motor connection to the right. Same motor, slightly different connection. So the big thing is much slower. The speed dropped off substantially with load. Here, the speed dropped off just slightly with load. Here you can see our overall current went from 900 to 1200, so that's about a 300 milliamp 
increase and here we went from 1860 up to 2070 so that's pretty close to a 350 odd milliamp increase no change in the field, the field stayed the same so again it's all about the armature current armature current must go up to provide the extra torque to overcome the load So, torque lower in the series motor, so that's that drop off in speed, and the torque higher in the shunt field. So depending on your application, if it's a lighter type load, then the series field will do the job. If it's a heavier load, then it's the shunt field that's going to do a better load, better job for you. So what are our observations? Let's have a quick look. So we had to explain the principles of operation of a DC motor. The construction of our motor combines the frame and the magnetic poles, this being indicated by the colors of red and blue. The armature produces a magnetic field that on one side attracts the frame poles and repels the, on the opposite side. This causes rotational movement and gives you that push-pull effect. Then as the shaft rotates the commutator, the switch reverses the armature's magnetic polarities and the process just repeats and that's what gives you the effect. So development of the torque of the motor. The shunt motor demonstrates that this is most effective. Note the increase in the motor current but the field stays steady between load and no load. The armature draws more current in response to an increased load. Also, the motor only slows fractionally. And explain how to reverse a DC motor. So to reverse a DC motor, the relationship between the armature and the field magnetic poles must be reversed. So in a series motor, just reversing the supply will not reverse the relationship. So in a series motor, the field or the armature must be reversed to change the direction of the rotation. The same is applicable to a shunt. In a fixed magnet field motor that most hobbyists use, reversing the supply is effectively reversing the armature only. So the field doesn't get reversed, so you get reverse rotation. That brings us to the end of magnetism practical number nine. Hope you've learned a little bit about how electric motors are built, connected, and how they operate.